the topic for today is um, your relationship with food, okay? So I've been kind of seeing this a lot lately, and I know, you know, most of us have bad relationships with food, and uh, and that's culturally, like, that's everywhere, guys, because here's the thing, is, like, food makes us feel good, right? When we eat food, self-love, yes, awesome, for sure, Emily, self-love is huge. Um, like, culturally, like, and it's funny when I, like, talk to somebody, and I'll be like, hey, what's your biggest, they'll be like, hey, my goal is to lose 30 pounds, something like that. Hey, what's your biggest struggle with losing 30 pounds? Oh, I love food. Like, I kind of just want to be like, yeah, no shit. Like, we all love food. Like, who doesn't love food? Like, who doesn't like food? Like, come on. That's not a good excuse. Um, so changing your relationship with the food that you're eating um, and and and, and kind of seeing those things that are setting you back, okay? So... Um, we all have that in us where it's like, you know, or the or people would be like, it's my culture that, you know, we all get together and eat like that's every culture. Like what? Tell me what culture doesn't sit with their family and eat and and celebrate with food like we all do that. Right. And that's why um, obesity is not a uh, an American, you know, thing. It's it's everywhere. Like you go anywhere around the world and most people are overweight. Um, and it's because we haven't learned how to manage our food. OK especially nowadays when we have um, the foods that are just more calorie dense, things that are genetically made to to eat a lot of, right? It's hard to have just one, like they do that on purpose, right? The the food scientists do that on purpose, so you, you have to buy more, right? Um, and that's not their fault, like that's the game of capitalism, so like, but it is, it's your fault, you have to look at it like, okay, just because these are very addicting doesn't mean that I have to go off the handle with these, right? Um, and the relationship with food comes back to like when you're doing this and you think like you're just going to eat healthy all the time and eat foods that, you know, you know are good for you, but maybe you don't necessarily even like that much or like you like them, but like you like them sparingly. You don't need, you know, you don't like them like eating the same thing every single day. Like that's not a long term game plan, guys. And when I hear people say that, like, you know, I haven't ate this food for so long and, you know, I haven't had a, a cheeseburger and fries for so long or whatever. It's like maybe you should have that cheeseburger and fries and just plan to have that and then show yourself that you can have that and be right back on it the next day and still stay within your limits. That's what's so great about this, guys, is that, like, you can still have that if you plan for it. Right. Um, it's just like anything, like the universe isn't going to reward you for going around sloppily, lazily, and just doing whatever you feel like, right? The universe is going to reward you for mm, being dialed in and, and having a process to things and being, uh, mindful of what you're doing and not, you know, all of these things that we tell our kids, but yet we're not practicing ourselves, right? So like, you need to fix that relationship with your food because food is fuel at the end of the day. All food is, is energy source, right? That's what a calorie is. It's literally like energy, right? It takes this much um, calories to burn or it takes this much activity to burn one calorie, one form of energy, right? So like you have to really flip your mindset around what how you look at food, okay? If food is just like Food's actually the number one most abused drug, guys. Like if you, um, if you look at it, like, but people don't call food a drug, but it really is because it does the same thing to your dopamine levels um, in your brain that a drug would do. Okay, right? When you do some cocaine, when you do some weed, when you do some alcohol, like you're getting that dopamine hit. Right? The same thing happens when you're taking in certain certain foods. Really, all foods, because obviously for survival purposes are. Our brain is like, hey, this is good. We want more of this so we can keep surviving because this is what it takes to survive. So we're, uh, we have food all around us, so we don't have to have that anymore. That's just what's ingrained us from, in us from, you know, our early caveman days, right? Like there wasn't always food. They would go without food for long periods of time, okay? So like evolution said, hey, we need to tell them that this is a good thing so we can keep our survival rate like that's all our body's trying to do is survive like that's a purpose right so when you have those levels like that you need to understand like that's what's going on in your brain okay and uh and thinking that you're just gonna like 
cut it all your cut all the crap out of your life and just never go back to it like it's not a long-term solution you need to understand that like hey i can have this i can enjoy it i cannot feel bad about it because it's accounted for that's what this all comes down to is accounting for certain things right when you can account for certain things like you can enjoy it right so like for instance uh coach e Lucas um, and myself, we went to the fights this weekend. We got some free tickets from Coach E because he's a boxing coach. We went and had some drinks, right? Um, and maybe they weren't all accounted for, but for the most part, we all somewhat had a plan of going into this, okay? So, like, I fasted up until noon. I ate, uh, ate my regular stuff. Um, and then I was allowed to have some drinks at the end of the night, right? Um, and I was fine. Like, I'm good. Like, like, I didn't ruin my progress, right? So... If you find yourself like as a person that like thinks you're just going to be clean all the time, like it doesn't work that way. And talk to any healthy person. Obviously, they're not drinking every week and they're not eating cheeseburgers every day. But that doesn't mean that they don't ever do that. Right. Like talk to them like they're going to tell you like, yeah, I I enjoy these things, too. I have them in moderation um, or they're tracking everything. Okay. And typically people that have really nice bodies that don't track everything, guys, it's like a lot of genetics, okay? I've seen that a lot, especially like I was in the gym world and I was never that guy like with just the great genetics, like, um, but I have seen a lot of coaches and other trainers that like they would eat shit and they would still just look good, right? And is that fair? Not at all. Like it sucks because it's like, damn, I want to look like you, but I can't eat that, right? And that's okay because you're going to enjoy that more. It's like... uh you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Like, talent doesn't understand what it has, so it doesn't work hard for anything, right? Talent's just talent. Hard work understands what it's like to gain a skill, what it's like to be good at something after you tried it so many times and you failed. That's what hard work is, and that's way more um, fulfilling than just having a natural talent, right? And we all have our natural things that we're good at, and we all have those things that we got to work harder at. And you got to change that perspective in yourself, too, to go hey, this might be harder for me, but that's okay. Because like, you know, one of my biggest things that I always think is like going into anything new or just anything in general is like, this is just going to be harder for me. And it might be just a perceived or I might just tell myself that on purpose just to like, know it's going to suck a while, right? Um, and when I have that perspective, okay, I can, I can do better. I can, um, I can have more patience, okay, because I just expect it to be hard and harder for me individually, right? Like, I can't get what the next person can get as easily as them. And that's okay. I've accepted that. And that's how you guys should look um, at this as well, too. Like, it's okay if it's hard. Like, it was supposed to be hard. Like, if it was easy, everybody would just be ripped all the time, right? And just looking good all the time. Like, it's not easy. So that's why... I say you guys are the one percenters like you're just going to do the work, right? Do that boring work every single day. So um, anyways, kind of getting off topic here. So changing your um, changing your um, relationship with food. Okay. And that also goes into like emotional eating. So I say all the time, emotional eating is just not like, oh, I feel I feel bad. So I'm going to eat my feelings. Right. Emotional eating is happy eating, sad eating, mad eating, glad eating, like whatever it is. That's why, like, when you go out to eat with your, you go on a celebration and you guys go have fun, like, that's still emotional eating. You're just emotional eating happiness, right? Um, and that's okay to do, too, but you got to have a plan. You got to have some structure. You got to have some discipline as well with that, too, because if you do what everybody else do does, you're going to be end up like everybody else does, right? And you don't want to end up like everybody else because... Most people, again, are just not happy um, in their life, in their physique, in their health, um, in their relationships. So um, you got to set yourself apart from that. And you got to make sure that like your happiness is the number one thing um, that's going on with you. It's the number one most important thing because without you being happy, like nobody else is going to be happy around you. So um, anyways, fix your relationship with food, guys. That's just a key, uh, few little tips for you. Um, don't try to eliminate all all the stuff that you love out of your diet um, plan for it enjoy it move on from it 80 20 rule 80 percent of the time you're eating the good healthy foods right 
the other 20 enjoy yourself right so um as long as it's all accounted for you will be perfectly fine i promise i've been doing this for years now um and just make sure that uh that you just don't have that negative relationship with food okay like um because that's not going to take you anywhere again it's the most abused drug we have okay so um food is the most abused drug out there and exercise and fitness is the most underused antidepressant right people are all kinds of pills and all this stuff and all they had to do is work out a little bit and that's going to fix a lot of it yoga or not yoga i'm sorry meditation you could do meditation and yoga simultaneously but like meditate work out that's why it's on your sheet guys like if you meditate five to ten minutes per day like your whole life changes i promise you and i'm not the meditation guy like i'm not the yogi like i'm i'm a regular dude like it was super hard for me even now it's still hard but just taking those deep breaths and and making sure that um you're having some some uh awareness of you right there in that moment um it just changes your world so Keep up the good work, guys. I hope this helped you on this crazy Monday. Well, not crazy, but just kind of whatever Monday. Um, let me know if you guys got any questions on um, fixing um, fixing your relationship with food. Um, remember, it's just an energy source, okay? That's all it does. It energizes your body, okay? Use it as fuel, not as a drug. Um, and then uh, let me know if you guys have any topics you want me to talk about. Um, in about two weeks, I will be going out of town just to give you a heads up when we go out, when I go out of town, coach Eric is going to be doing the next, next live session on a really good topic that I think needs to be hit on the head. So he'll be taking you through that. I'll send invites out probably right before I leave. Um, that'll probably be around, I think the ninth or 10th of next month. So I'll let you guys know as we get closer, but, uh, got some fun stuff coming in the works guys. Uh, top secret right now. I can't talk about it quite yet, but, uh, I promise you guys are going to love it. Um, yeah, you have a great rest of your day as well, Emily. Hashtag live in the comments. Hashtag replay if you're watching after the fact, guys. So have a good rest of your Monday. Crush this week, guys. Let's keep building. We'll see you later.